Hey everyone, we're Tollway Couple. I'm Tom the Driver. And I'm Bunny, the cold hearted. Beep. <laughs> hey now. You can't say that. <laughs> I guess you can say it if you you're gonna trigger some somebody out there. <laughs> so good morning from a nice cold chilly morning about 24 miles from Chattanooga, Tennessee. We're sitting in a rest area where we stayed the night last night on our way to Ocala, Florida. Right, and we get this beautiful view. We got to sleep on the river. First off, we want to give a shout out to the two guys in the blue car last week. <laughs> Yes, yes. So we were driving near Bowling Green, Kentucky, and this car rolls up on Bunny in the motorhome, and they're waving frantically, smiling, showing her phone, and she thought, she radios me and says, I think I have, I'm having a problem. These guys are just waving at me, and they're showing me their phone and everything. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I see them hauling butt towards me, so all of a sudden, they get up next to me, and they're just all smiles, jumping up and down, showing me the phone they roll down their window so I roll down my window and he goes we follow you guys <laughs> you know it's the funny part was is they were in a car where you you know I people wave to us in their trucks but yeah never but, in a car I mean how, how did they know who we were I said just randomly look in a motorhome in a truck when you drive by right I mean <laughs> just randomly look in a motorhome and see the truck I don't know that was kind of cool that was awesome so anyways today we're gonna talk about drive away so we've been yes. talking about tow away a lot but we're gonna talk about drive away because Bunny's been experiencing um, she's experienced a yes. few things and we thought we would share those with you to hopefully save you guys some headaches right absolutely because you know these are running motors Yes. So when they're coming out, they're they're not coming out perfect all the time. They're called motorized units. <laughs> that they are. So, you know, one of the things that we definitely learned, I've been doing drive away for, gosh, what, almost a year and a half now? Oh, yeah. And I always just immediately pulled out, put a full tank of gas in, and we left. Right away. Why, yes. typically, at the yard... If the yards were close by, Bunny would pull out and I would just go to the next yard and I would hook onto the trailer while she was fueling up, I mean, literally all the way full. And we haven't gotten dinged on anything yet, but we have had some issues where we kind of realized we could have been out of a lot of money. Right. <clears throat> now, the thing is, is too, is once you check these out and you get them out of the yard, they're your responsibility. I mean, literally, that guard signs off. <laughs> I know some of the yards, there's nobody signing off, but the minute you put in your app that you're taking the unit, you're responsible for that unit. So we'll give you an example, and this is how we figured it out. <laughs> Bunny came out of the yard, and we went over and got my trailer and all of a sudden her traction control light came on. Which is it's pretty common. It's common. I mean, you hit any type of wind or uh, slick road or anything, those traction lights come on. We were only two miles from the um, main it's, office, so mm -hmm. we pulled back in there and Bunny went into claims. Right, and I told them what happened, and they're like, oh, once you leave the gate, you're responsible, so you have to call roadside assistance. We're like, really? We're right here. <laughs> and I'm like, now this is a common problem, and typically the light goes off after five minutes. I just wanted to let you know. And she goes, well, no, definitely that would be a call for roadside assistance. That could be four or five hours. Yes. Now, especially being, on a motorhome, and being that we were right there, chances are that would have just they would have just said drove it or drive it to the nearest repair facility and wait for it. <laughs> but like I said, on these units, you know, you usually turn them off for about five minutes. The light goes off, you're good to go. They said if the light goes off, we make the decision to take it or call roadside assistance. Miraculously, the light went off. Yes. But that light always goes off. It, yes, and it <laughs> never came back on. They those those traction lights really love to come on on I eighty. In the winds, <laughs> going uphill. Yeah, the good good gust of wind hits it, and that damn traction light goes off. So, anyways, the second time. Now that was a full tank. Of, that was a literally so a full tank of gas. I did well. Hold on, I did have a complete breakdown really? where my <laughs> rear end caught on fire. Right, but what I was going to say is, what happens is, is if you have to call roadside assistance and they come and tow the vehicle, 
it's it, it goes one of two ways. They will first call you as a driver when it's fixed to come pick it up. If you're on another dispatch and you're clear across the country and you're not able to pick it up within a certain amount of time or can't pick it up, then they will put it up on the dispatch board and then that's where you lose money because the next person that picks it up gets a full, full tank, tank of, of fuel. Gas. Yeah, I've picked up some out of the yard that have had a half a tank of gas in it. Yep. So you know that somebody had a breakdown, it got towed back, got repaired, brought into the yard with a full tank of gas, and I scored. Yeah, we call that a <laughs> winning scenario for us, unfortunately for the other driver, but we don't know who the other driver was to say, hey, here's uh, 40, 50 bucks for whatever fuel. So we just take the unit, and we don't know if it came from the manufacturer with half tank of gas. Right, so our biggest, our biggest piece of advice would be when you go to pick these up while you are doing your pre-trip on that motorhome let that engine run one right now you're definitely going to want to run to heat it up really good right and get that inside of that rv nice and warm but two if um a light happens to come on then you know you're not taking that unit out of that yard yeah um bunny's going to talk about the rear end almost catching on fire next but because we got another unit where we went and since we have an apartment in Elkhart, we're able to go pre-trip our units, make sure there's no scratches, damages the day before we leave. So we don't have to pull them out of the yard and let them sit in some parking lot somewhere with the risk of somebody scratching it, denting it, or stealing something off of it. And when we did our pre-trips, Bunny starts it up, makes sure everything's running, all the lights are off, the gas gauge is at a quarter, because if it's not at a quarter, then she's calling claims because it has to be delivered at a quarter. So we want to make sure we get reimbursed for at Correct. least up to the quarter tank yep. of fuel. Everything was functional. We go back the next day, I just dropped Bunny off at the RV, and I am going down to, I had to run over to an apartment. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, halfway to the apartment, Buddy's pulling out with the motorhome, and I get a call. Right. Uh, this one was definitely an engine light. It was. A, it was it an engine light, not an a traction light. control light. So I immediately, I hadn't even gotten up even close to the guard shack. I had just pulled out of the row, so I turned around, pulled it right back put it back in park where it was at and, and called, me. called Tom I'm like the engine lights on this time it's not no little traction light this is an engine light so she called claims I did call claims and they said find a yard find jockey. a yard yeah. jockey and have them come over and put a uh, or just let just to look it over yeah just to look it over so I, I had the meter <laughs> so I waited and waited and finally Tom came in first yep and I hooked my um, scanner up to the port underneath the dash and immediately I looked up the code and it was a cam timing sensor. And I thought, okay, where were we going with that one? We were going to Pennsylvania. Okay, I wasn't gonna run those 600 miles hoping the light was gonna go off on that one. No, so as we're doing that, finally somebody came in and, and he came over and he's like, Oh, I wouldn't take that. <laughs> right, because I was showing. I left the meter hooked up for him. Right, and then um, the the lady that was with him, she said she does drive away, and she she said that she has had that happen to her on several occasions. She goes, "You're lucky. That light usually comes on when you're about 40 miles out." Right. So, so that is why we say don't fill your fuel tank. So the fuel tank has a quarter tank. That can usually get you 100 to 150 miles. Right. So what you want to do is you want to kind of stretch that out. We're not saying run the tank empty, but we are saying run it to where if you have a problem, you aren't eating $150 in fuel. Right. <clears throat> Plus, the other big fact on that is we all know that fuel prices in Elkhart County are not the cheapest. Right. So if you just top a little bit to where you can get to a cheaper fuel station, you're doing much better anyways, financially for yourself. Yep. Now tell them about the fire on the rear end. Okay, so um, we were taking, it was only a 300 mile run. We were only going to Michigan. So luckily, luckily I only put $70 in it. And cause it was a big, 
like 39 foot class A. So I put $70 in it figuring that that would get me to where I needed to go. And halfway there, I get flagged down. Um, this time I'm like, these guys were waving at me to get over and screaming at me. And I look in the back and they're like, they're yelling me, you're on fire. <laughs> I'm in front of her. So I call Tom on the radio. I'm like, you need to get back here fast. So I get out and yeah, the rear end had completely burned up. Yep. So here First I'm, thing I asked her is, did you forget to un <laughs> did undo your emergency brake? brake? Yeah, like, and she's like, no, no, no. That w I mean, we went 140 miles. That thing would have burned up a lot faster right. than that. Well, I originally started hearing clanking, clanking, and I thought it was the diesel next to me with his tire chains. Right. So. It turned out, I, I believe it was a ring and pinion gear. Um, probably the bearing for the... Um, Pinion gear, so right because I drove it a little bit and it literally was clunk, clunk, clunk. Right, and so, that tow truck had to disconnect some things to get it to, to even pull anywhere. But that was a five hour that one was on the side of the freeway. And these idiots do not merge over. We put our triangles out, we had all of our flashers on, and these trucks are going by within inches and we're calling tow trucks and they're like we're doing the best we can to get someone that can actually suitable that's suitable to pull that rv and then the company is going to want you to go with that rv to drop it off to make sure it gets there safely and to make sure it gets there <laughs> right so fortunately we had another trailer going somewhere else so they just made sure that we followed up on the phone with the uh, the repair shop and everything correct but like i said in that instance there yes i was refunded um they did give me like half of my money back on my well, fuel well because they, you drove 70 miles right because i had already driven it 70 miles you didn't get refunded on the fuel you got re you got reimbursed for the mileage <laughs> for the mileage so so yeah it could be a win or it could be a lose i mean the one that i'm driving I right think now we lost on that one the one that i'm driving right now yesterday's complete fill up was 230 dollars that would have sucked that would have sucked now we were going to california and buddy had a sprinter van a mercedes sprinter van <laughs> and then we stayed the night in Tucumcari, and we were on our way to Albuquerque to fill up because it was a diesel. We got the diesel discount. And about, I don't know, about 30 miles from Albuquerque, Bunny said her traction control light came on. Well, that's common. We see that all the time. Usually it means you can't use your cruise control, and it uh, your uphill assist um, doesn't work and it usually limits your speed to like 55 or 65 miles an hour right what you're in the yellow okay oh that's my battery <laughs> i gotta charge my battery so anyway we we go okay we'll we'll get in and we'll get in the fuel station and we'll let it cool down and we'll figure it out there well, and then too but when i was driving everything the sensor went off everything yeah. was completely off so i was like oh must have just been a fluke. Yeah, it's it's common on these brand new units that these they have little glitches like that. Mm -hmm. So we get there and our lights even getting dimmer. Yep. So um, we, she gets in the fuel island behind a diesel, and we had to run in and go pee. So she shuts it off, and she can't get it into park. No, it got into park. It wouldn't go anywhere else. So I said, well, let's go to the bathroom. We'll it figure it, it out. It put itself in park. Okay. So I said, let's go to the bathroom. We'll figure it out. We go into the bathroom. We come out. The It would not come out of park. And that traction light. And then it's had a service transmission light. And I'm thinking, what if you were on the freeway? And it, Yeah. And the service transmission site, site or said, drive immediately to a Mercedes dealer. And I'm thinking, how do you drive anywhere when you can't <laughs> get it out of park? So we, we called the uh, roadside assistance and literally we're, she's in the fuel island, one diesel length away from the fuel pump. And these diesels are just screaming around her left and right. I got pictures where they're literally, I could have taken a tape measure and measured under an inch where they were cutting in front of her because these diesels know that when you're in those truck stops, it's a very hard thing to get insurance claims or who's at fault and stuff like that so they don't care and it's not even their trailer usually they own the truck but not the trailer right, right. so though we were nervous 
and because it was a tall Sprinter van, they said, we got to get the right tow truck. They just sent out a freaking flatbed tow truck of after four and a half hours yep. of sitting there. And I kept calling them, I am not in a safe location. This thing is going to get wrecked. And they couldn't even get another wrecker out there just to pick it up and move it over while we waited for the correct tow truck. No. But anyway, the thing is, is that one, we were at a quarter tank when we were going to fill it up. We picked it up at a quarter tank. So she got reimbursed for all the miles to Albuquerque. Right. But when they called us a month later. Yeah. Over a month later to pick it up. We were in California, so we told them we couldn't pick it up. And so they did dispatch it out to somebody else. So they drove it the rest of the way. Now here is the clincher, and I know this video is long. You cannot self-dispatch if your motorhome or motorized unit is in for repair. You have to go through a dispatcher. So that made it really tough on us getting two units going same direction a lot of times. And so that's now happened twice. Yep, yep. So definitely on your pre-trip, like I said, definitely please check for lights. Um, they they do go off quite often. <laughs> and right. uh, you just gotta make sure that that is in good solid sound running. And especially, you know, check your horn, check everything. Because if you get pulled in for inspection, it's on you. Yes, and they're gonna make you check all that sh um, sh stuff. <laughs> gotta watch my language <laughs> somebody called me out on that <laughs> all right so i think we're pretty much done yep so my we just wanted to throw to that bed. out there yeah our butts are freezing <laughs> we got our jackets on bunny's not wearing her normal shirt so i'm bummed <laughs> so until next time we will see you down the road we'll see you down the road